The activity we're engaged in is fly fishing. The idea is that you're mimicking the food that the trout eat. I'm throwing a black cone head woolly booger, which looks like a leech or a big worm. And the cone head provides weight and gets it down. Obviously the water's high and going pretty fast today. Some friends introduced me to fly fishing and it looks really difficult, particularly if you're watching me do it, but it really isn't. It's popular, I guess, here in the mountains because of the trout. And trout's one of the, but not the only, species that are real targets for fly fishing. Um, and so here in our area, uh, in western Maryland, Pennsylvania is about two miles that way, and West Virginia is just a few miles to our south. All three states have very active uh, trout programs, trout stream classifications, um, stocking, and those things go back generations. The folks that we have here today are from the Frostburg State Fishing Club. Um, we've been working with them through our Trout Unlimited chapter. They meet every Thursday night in the Science Center and they might have 12 to 25 students show up for a meeting. And here they are out on a Saturday because some old guy said, hey, come fishing. And you got three amazing young people. Uh, they're educated, they're articulated, and uh, in particular, uh, Morgan's been very active, um, and she represents a, a whole new generation of um, environmentally conscious uh, fishermen. Obviously, she's female, uh, but it's uh, um, you know there's an awful lot of talk about gender roles, and she's living proof that there isn't any when it comes to fishing. They came to uh, fly fishing in different ways. One was genetic, grandfather, father. The other was through art, uh, um, th uh, through the tying of the flies. I started learned tying flies before I started fishing, and I'm just interested in art a lot too, and I found it as to be like a second art form. Um, so I figured if I enjoy tying these things, I might as well go out and use them. And fly fishing itself is already a sport where you're a little bit more connected. And when you catch a fish on a fly that you tied, it just kind of adds to that level. So it's, it's really cool. <laughs> One of the things that we see, unfortunately, in young America, which is why I'm so proud of the Frostburg State students that are here with us today, awful lot of their lives is spent on electronic devices. Uh, they, 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 do, they literally do everything on computers and smartphones and tablets and I'm not knocking them. I've got a bunch of them. She got hers out. Yeah. Only she got one. Look at that. See, you can't get that experience on your tablet or your smartphone. That's a nice one. I normally come up to the Castleman from Frostburg and I'll fish an hour and a half to two hours. And I'm normally completely by myself. Now I do fish occasionally with friends. My son will fish with me in the summertime. But in the springtime and in the fall when it's really you're dedicated to trout, I'm generally by myself. It's just me in the river. I seldom actually catch fish. There's, there's a 40 year joke about me and not catching. But it's, it's me in the river. I'm only 20 minutes from home. It's not like I went to Alaska. Um, and we don't live in the middle of the city, thank goodness. But it's that alone time in a special place like this. There's both camaraderie and solitude and you have to be okay with that maybe even want that uh, as an alternative to 
the busyness of life or just to be closer to, the na to nature.